Oviedo, ancient Etruscan and Roman city, is dramatically situated on a huge rock of tuff. It was the papal residence in the 16th century, and today Oviedo is famous for white wine. In the middle of the city, there is the Cathedral of Oviedo. Oviedo belongs to Umbria region, about 100 km from Rome. In medieval times, Oviedo was architecturally influenced by Florence, Pisa, and Siena as well, and vice versa. This is the Gothic facade of the cathedral. It's simply beautiful. By the way, why is this facade Gothic? The reason is it has sharply angled gables, a rose window, pointed arches, though the central arch is still a round arch, a Romanesque feature, vertical buttresses or piers which end with pinnacles, and ornaments like croquettes and catafoils like these are all Gothic characters. However, there is a critical difference between this facade and the authentic French Gothic facade. The facade of Oviedo lacks towers. Now look at the examples of France. This is Lan Cathedral, and this is Amiens Cathedral. Both have immense towers at the front. Let us explain the difference in a little more detail. Important is Oviedo, Lan, and Amiens are all the same type of church architecture, basilica. This is Basilica, the most popular church type in West Europe. Its cross-section is step-like. Basilica is laid east-west. The west side has the main entrance and the main facade. The east side, that faces the direction of Jerusalem, has the apse liturgically the most important area. Sometimes a transept appears between the nave and the apse. Sometimes the apse area is enlarged in many ways. Countries other than Italy tried to combine towers and basilica since about 800 AD. And as for facade, two tower facade prevailed in Gothic period. Take one more French example, Reims Cathedral. Seen from behind, the towers have depth and strength. While in Italy, they didn't build any tower at the front. The facade is very impressive, seen from the front at least, but it has no depth and no relation to the building behind. It's just like a signboard. The beautiful facade of Oviedo Cathedral has, seen from behind, no depths. Let's take another Italian example, Santa Maria Novella in Florence. When you see this church from the cathedral tower, you will realize that this famous Renaissance facade by Alberti is also merely a signboard. 
In the end of 13th century, when the facade of Oviedo was going to be planned, the latest Gothic style was so-called rayonan style, typified by transept facades of Paris Cathedral, Notre Dame. The first plan of the facade of Orvieto, attributed to the main architect Lorenzo Maitani, shows the influence of the style of Notre Dame. Now let's have a closer look at the realized facade. There's a notched gallery between the two stories. It unites the upper and lower stories softly and elegantly. If the gallery had been stone cornice, the impression would not be that graceful. And look the top of the central gable cuts into the upper story. If the gable had been lower, it would cause a sense of separation of the two stories. The rose window has a delicate tracery, giving the facade an elegant look. Compare it with the facade without tracery. Let's have a look at the facade of Siena Cathedral for a comparison. The construction of the facade of Siena began earlier than Orvieto's. The two facades look very much alike. Both have two tiers of three gables and a rose window in the center. But the rose window of Siena has no tracery. Lacking the airy gallery, the transition from the first to the second story of Siena is abrupt and rigid. The three entrances have equal widths and height that create somewhat unstable feeling. causes discontinuity of vertical elements. In reality, however, the facade of Siena is much smaller than that of Orvieto. The facade of Orvieto is nearly the same size with that of Paris Cathedral. If French Gothic architects had seen this facade, they would have been surprised by mosaics all over the facade. It appears more Byzantine than Gothic. Technically, plain mosaic wall is incompatible with Gothic principles. Furthermore, the bronze is made by Maitani on the piers and in the tympan. and relief sculpture are unusual elements in French Gothic style. These reliefs are made by Maitani and his colleagues, depicting scenes from Old and New Testaments. They really must have been the poor man's Bible along with the mosaics. The leftmost pier is thought to be made by Maitani himself, who died in 1330. God infuses life into Adam. This is creation of Eve. Fluid and subtle expressions make these reliefs one of the most important sculpture in the 14th century. The rightmost pier is the last judgment. This is hell. And 
and this is the elect. Mosaics depict life of Saint Mary. The gable of the main entrance is Assumption of Mary in Glory. And the central top gable is Coronation of the Virgin Mary. But all the original 14th century mosaics are redone. The rose window is attributed to Andre Orcania. It has a wheel type tracery with 22 spokes and Christ head in the center. How about visiting Orvieto and see the Gothic facade of Duomo? whose golden mosaics reflect the setting sun so beautifully. <laughs>